What is up guys? Welcome back. Helen, Georgia is over. The W108 is home. And I think in this episode, I'm gonna be working on the auto union a little bit. Not really working on it, but as you can see, I've got it up on jack stands. And the main reason for that is I really needed to get 15 inch rubber on the factory wheels that would hold air. Only one of the four wheels is holding air. And my friend Perry Freeman from Quick Everett's Garage here in town uh, let me borrow a set of 13 inch Mark 1 Steelies to put on it. But unfortunately, uh, 13s won't fit on the front because the lower uh, like mount for the kingpin where the lower control arm mounts to the spindle uh, is in the way and the inner lip actually hits that. So Perry had a set of Mark 4 15s uh, that were mounted with some 195-65 15s and uh, was kind enough to give them to me if I was willing to come over and dismount them, dismount the garbage tires off the factory steelies and uh, mount his tires on. These wheels are in rough shape and I'm surprised a couple of them are even holding air. When I dismounted the old tires, I was wire brushing the lips because they really, really were pretty cruddy and pretty rusty. And two of them, I was wire wheeling like inside of the barrel of the wheel away. I mean, it was the pile of rust that was left was pretty substantial. But as you can see, I got decent tires on the 1000 SP wheels. This one obviously has the hubcap on it. This is what they look like. They're really cool steelies. But as you can also see, they're pretty cruddy. So I'm thankful they're holding air. I'm gonna get them back on the 1000 and get it down off the jack stands. I haven't gone through everything that's in the car yet. There's a stash of parts, uh, engine parts, interior parts. Figured I'd go through all that stuff with you guys because I'd like to get the car hoed out and really cleaned up. So I'm working on cleaning the hubcaps up just because they're off. I took the opportunity to start polishing them just to, just to see uh, what was left underneath all of the, uh, the crud. I'm just putting some of this turtle wax chrome polish and rust remover to it and it's, uh, it's, it's working wonders. And I'm just doing it by hand. The 700 came with 12 inch by three and a half steel wheels. And I have all four of the original hubcap wheel covers. Uh, two are in pretty bad shape, but I have all four nonetheless. I had a white W111 Mercedes as a parts car to my brown one. And when I sold that car, I ended up keeping the original four dog dish hubcaps. Now that just like the 108 here was a two piece setup. It had the dog dish in the center and a beauty ring outside it. At about 69, 1969, they went to a full one piece wheel cover. Uh, so I have four of those as well, but I think it's really cool to have a set of these hubcaps from the same year from three different German manufacturers. So ultimately I'm gonna have a set of four of the Auto Union, Pre-Audi, BMW and Mercedes hubcaps that I'll probably make some sort of display piece out of, whether or not there's some sort of backlit lamp, wall art or, or something. But I really thought this was cool. I wanted to share this with you guys because I kind of geek out about this kind of stuff. Yeah, I'd like to clean these up, maybe paint them white again, the inlays around the, the star and then inside the actual dog dish. All right, so hear me out. To be fair, any of these dog dishes would probably look amazing on the center of a Schmidt TH line. It's amazing what a set of tires will do for a car when the old ones are all roached out. But now it's a roller, having new tires on it really improved the look of the car. Uh, but now I can move it around the yard basically whenever I want. Uh, tires, the old tires are going flat in the first like 20 minutes you put air in them. So inside you can tell there's all sorts of just parts and garbage. What never used to be garbage, but it's garbage now. But I want to show you guys one thing that I found in this car. I have yet to go through all the small bit, but in this tin right here was the find. Look at this. So this was a true find for the car. When I first got to the car in Ohio, it was clear there was no gas cap which didn't really matter because there's no gas tank in the car anymore anyway. If I end up doing a fuel cell in the car or whatever I end up doing for a fuel tank, I'll have to figure out you know, some vintage looking cap. Well, in the car was the OEM original Auto Union two-stroke specific cap. It's such a cool specific cap for the car too. Since the car is two-stroke, 
The cap, being originally German with the car, says right on it, one part oil, two part petrol. All right, before I wheel it in the shop, I decided to clean a lot of like the heavy stuff out of the car. Uh, we've got numerous sets of points. As I've mentioned before, the crank runs the points and then the points run the coils per plug. So these are some extra coils that were in the car, some original stuff. There's some Solex parts, points parts, uh, the air filter, an extra steering wheel, which is awesome. I don't have an extra center cap. And this is how hoarding begins. You're into some weird, eclectic, rare stuff and you start hoarding every little nut and bolt just in case you might need it. Well, I've got the auto union in the shop for the first time. I've got all four cars crammed in here because we had a little bit of rain come through, but it looks like it's passed. So I'll get the Mercedes back outside and get this kind of centered in the bay a little bit more uh, to continue cleaning the car out. All right, guys, so I cleaned up the windows, got the interior cleaned out, and here's some of the evidence about uh -huh. its possible race history. And it probably isn't anything official, but it's got harnesses in it. And I noticed that when I first bought the car. These are the backrests, or your shoulder straps, I should say. These are your lap belts here for both sides. And there's no interior other than what you're seeing here and everything that was inside. The, still got the door cards, the dash mat, what's left of it. But there were no seats. It may have had, you know, a race seat or two race seats or at least buckets or something like that. And aside from the harnesses in the car, there is a fire extinguisher mount right here in the parcel shelf. And I'm willing to bet that's not an OEM 1960 placement for a fire extinguisher. And I'll show you guys on the back of the trunk uh, where what I think are some magnetic numbers used to sit and probably over years and years of staying there They've kind of imprinted themselves uh, or the silhouettes of where they used to sit on the inside of the, the trunk lid But I think that's pretty cool because you see a lot of these oddball cars as race clubs uh, These 1000 SPs a lot of these two-stroke cars like the Sobs, the early two-stroke Sobs, even the BMW 700s I've seen a lot of video footage of guys in cars like this uh, racing Goodwood over in England. And so this actually may have been on the track, which it it's looking like it had. Uh, I don't know anything about the history of this car. I know the gentleman that I bought it off of in Ohio had gotten it out of North Carolina, and I have no idea how long it had been there. I'm willing to bet it was there quite a while because it is pretty rust-free. Up underneath, the sills are all in great shape. The pinch welds of the sills the rockers, the frame up underneath is solid. It's a frame car. Uh, it really has pretty solid bones to it. The bottoms of the doors, uh, it's, it's got some holes in the floor, but once the window seals went, you know, it, it collected water. So it's got some holes in the floor. There's some holes underneath the rubber mats here. I pulled some of these up and there's some holes in the, in the floor, but that's, none of that's structural. Being a frame car, the frame's solid and a lot of the body's bones are solid as well. So that's a great sign. But here's the inside of the trunk lid and it's clear that there were some numbers, some magnetic numbers that were stuck to it for quite some time. So yeah, may have been on the track and driven pretty hard at one point, which I think is really cool. So this car is gonna live all sorts of different lives. It left the factory in 1960 Someone bought this thing brand new, and then at some point along the way, somebody was putting harnesses and a fire extinguisher in it and numbers on the doors and driving it really, really hard probably. And then it sat for decades and was basically destined for parts or the crusher or to just rot away behind somebody's barn. And now it's gonna see a new life as one of these cars, which basically are preservation builds. Mechanically, these cars, have been all gone through. I mean, we chopped the roof on the Corvair. We body dropped it, all new suspension, custom built. The 700's on a beetle pan now with a four cylinder instead of a two cylinder in the back. And, and I drive them, they're turnkey, ready to go. I've been halfway across America in that car, in the Corvair. And this will be, this will be the third one. This will be another car that gets a rejuvenated drivetrain and custom suspension. It's gonna be as low as these ones, that's for sure. That's what I'm into, but you're gonna drive down the road again in this car. And hopefully, I'll ultimately be a curator for it. And long after I'm gone, someone is still driving this car. So here's the under the hood setup. I know I showed it briefly in the last episode, 
uh, but it's a three cylinder, two stroke, coil per plug. This is the point system here. It's, it's off the motor right now, but that mounts up against the front and the crank turns it. I have a lot to learn in this car because since the last episode, I have decided so far that I really want to keep the auto union drivetrain. I want to keep all of this. I want to keep it front wheel drive. I really want to rebuild this motor and transmission setup. Where all the modification and fabrication is going to come from is the suspension because I want to body drop the car like the Corvair and the 700. And I think I can do that with keeping the engine and radiator and transaxle where they sit in the car. I don't know yet if the body's going to have to get channeled and set down over the frame a little bit more uh, where I might lose a little bit of this radiator to hood height. I don't know about any of that. We'll cross those bridges as we get to them. There will be many, I'm sure, in this project. I appreciate everybody's comments in the last video, especially those of you who have put me on to Two Stroke Turbo's YouTube channel, uh, which is gonna be a wealth of knowledge. I haven't spoken to him at all yet. I've just kind of shadowed his channel. I've spoken to some friends in Argentina, as well as in Europe and even South Africa, who have a lot of auto union cars at their disposal. And hopefully, just hopefully, we'll be able to put a bunch of stuff together. And hopefully it'll lead me to those parts of the world. I've spent a lot of time in Europe, but I've never been to South Africa or South America. Well, I'm gonna end the video there. Just kind of an introductory episode to the 1000. The last episode was obviously acquiring the car and the road trip to go get it as it was happening. But this is kind of the first time I've had a chance to really get a good look at the car now that I've owned it you know, and had it here in the shop. First time it came into the shop. So got some things cleaned up on it, kind of have a game plan, a tentative game plan for the car. But thank you guys so much for watching. I'm super excited to get into this project. Hopefully have a lift coming in here soon, as long as the wait isn't too long. I'm really excited to learn more about this car and dive headfirst into this project. I appreciate you guys' support. I will see you guys in the next episode.